the happy prince is a very beautiful story in your syllabus and it uh, discusses that morals should be upheld upheld for the sake of humanity here in the happy prince is not a character is not a live character but a statue only and how this statue can see the world full of miseries full of hunger and full of problems issues like poverty illiteracy etc etc and how this uh, particular statue lends a helping hand to different persons facing different kind of problems that is how the story goes and that is what the story describes so let us now read it further uh, first of all i'm going to discuss the characters and then i will be discussing the story in brief let me introduce uh, this lesson to all of you this story is about a prince when this prince was alive he was very happy but after his death a big statue of his was erected on a pedestal on a pedestal and from there the statue of the prince could see the entire city he could see the entire city and while he could see the entire city he also saw that how people were leading a very poor life full of different different problems he saw people suffering due to so many issues some were homeless some were hungry some were starving to death so there were like so many issues which he could see from there so this prince was not happy at all so there is an irony in the name the prince is you know known as happy prince but the name is quite ironical because the prince is actually sad why the prince is sad because prince could see the miseries of the people he saw the poor people the homeless their hunger and starvation the prince was sad to see all these miseries sadness of the people so let us know how this prince helps the needy how does he lend a helping hand to different persons facing different issues in their lives so let me first of all tell you the characters in the story happy prince is the protagonist in the story happy prince is a statue he is not alive he is dead and after upon his death a statue was you know erected his statue was erected which is gilded which is gilded and you know so many rubies sapphires are used to decorate this particular statue the protagonist of this story who is known as happy prince he led a happy life when alive after his death his statue was erected and it was gilded with expensive jewels he could see the entire city from the pedestal on which his statue sits he is in pain to see the people suffering the statue is you know uh, uh, at a pedestal and this pedestal is so high that the prince could see the statue is so high that the that the it this statue this prince could see you know the whole city and while he saw the whole city he was you know able to see how the people were suffering the another character is uh, you know here in the story is a swallow and this is a sparrow it is the other protagonist in the story Sw swallow is very compassionate at heart it was selfish he was selfish at the start but achieves the highest morality you know as the story goes on it also assists happy prince in achieving his goal happy prince wanted to help the needy but to reach those needy the statue couldn't walk it needed somebody's assistance and this assistant was provided by this bird and this is the another main character in the story and you know the swallow is the character that achieves the highest morality and when we will read the story we will come to know how it goes next character is reed it is not a very much important character but this character has very important you know uh, impact on this um, swallow bird this reed she appears relatively briefly in the story and what we find is 
the sparrow initially this sparrow initially falls in love with her swallow this swallow falls in love with reed at first but late and uh, you know and delays the migration to warmer territory in order to wait for the reed now we come to know that the atmosphere where the statue of the prince is erected the atmosphere there is quite you know uh, cold and it is changing very soon the snowfall will start that is why the birds are migrating to the warmer territory warmer countries like egypt they were they were to go to egypt but you know what happened was this swallow was delaying this swallow was delaying the uh, you can say that migration because this swallow had fancies for the reed due to some issues she decides who decides this reed decides not to travel with this sparrow which ends their relationship and drives him away to the town where he meets the happy prince and you know this uh, swallow was kind of sad uh, when it came to know that reed wouldn't be going along with him and he came near the statue of the happy prince and he perched over there when he perched there the conversation between the two started let us know the other characters in the story there is a little match girl and this match girl is poverty stricken she is very poor she loses all her matchsticks we come to know that she sells matchsticks that is why she is known as little match girl she loses all her matchsticks and she was scared of her father as he beats her her father keeps beating her if she is unable to get some money in the evening by selling those matchsticks so to the, this day this day that day she had lost all those matchsticks she dropped them you know out of mistakes now she was scared of her father because he beats her happy prince could see the misery of this little match girl and he sacrificed his other sapphire eye sapphire eye to help this little girl who was in tragedy who was in a tragic condition then we see that you know also the character of the god is being discussed here god appears in the very last lines of the story to rescue the sparrow's body and the happy prince leaden heart and to promise them eternity in paradise for their sacrifices let us move further and these are the another characters in the story which we are going to discuss the women in the poor house we see that a seamstress seamstress sewing seamstress sewing fashion flowers on a satin gown for one of the queen's maids of honor too poor to purchase an orange for her ill son this woman inspires the happy prince to give away the ruby from his sword hilt now the the other characters minor characters are there this woman is a very poor very poor lady she was sewing one of the gowns of the queen's maid of honor she is too poor that she can't even arrange an orange for her son who is sick aged and this woman inspires the happy prince and you know due to this woman happy prince sacrifices his ruby from the sword hilt there was a ruby in uh, the sword hilt of this statue and the happy prince directs directs or asks uh, or requests this um, swallow to take out that ruby and give that ruby to this lady who is in need of that desperately the next character is the playwright playwright the ones who write dramas and plays he is a young man writing plays in his garret garret is an attic room with a hole in the roof he struggles to combat cold and hunger until the happy prince gives up one of his sapphire eyes to help him and this young writer is also very very poor and he can't even arrange he can't even arrange you know clothes or something like that to keep himself warm in that you know very cold weather now we again see that there's another character the mayor mayor is he only appears at the very conclusion of the conclusion of the story ending of the story mayor's narcissistic 
attitude epitomizes the problems of the power. He wants the happy prince melted down and recast in his new image, in his own image, and he wants to issue a proclamation banning birds from dying in public. Now we see that this mayor is very, very, you can say that a uh, negative kind of person over here who is a very selfish person. He's very selfish person. And, you know, he is the one who brag a lot about power. He wants the happy prince to be measured. When he came there, there in that square where this happy prince statue was, you know, uh, erected on a pedestal, he came there and when he noticed that there was no gold or nothing left over there on the happy prince he ordered the statue to be melted and later on he wanted one of his own statues to be made and erected over there he also passed a proclamation and order that the birds couldn't die in public then there are like town councillors minor characters often discussed in the collective the town councillors represent the deepest corruption in the city they are very corrupted they are obsessed with reputation. They ignore anything that doesn't appear beautiful or beneficial for their self-promotion. So, you know, all in all, we come to know that people are suffering at the hands of the ones in power. They are not lending a helping hand to them. Rather, those people are left to starve and suffer at the hands of poverty. But... This happy prince, the statue of happy prince speaks volumes that how something not alive could see, could actually feel humanity at heart, which the ones who had blood running through their veins towards their heart couldn't feel. So this is how the story proceeds. These are the characters in the story. So now I'm going to discuss the story in brief. So once upon a time, once upon a time, there was a prince. He was called the happy prince because he had been happy all his life. After his death, his statue was erected and, you know, it was erected on a pedestal and it could see everything on the town, whole town. The statue was covered with gold and had two precious sapphire stones embedded in the eyes. A ruby stone had been fitted into the handle of this sword. Now the happy prince is being described. How the statue of this happy prince looks. Why this happy prince got this name? Because he was happy throughout his life. After his death, a statue on his name was erected over there. And this statue was made of, uh, you know, iron, but it was gilded. Gilded means to say that it was covered with gold. And in the eyes, two precious sapphire stones were embedded and a ruby was fitted into the handle of his sword. This is the brief description of the happy prince. You can see over here also. From there, from that pedestal, he could see all around the place and realize that people lived in a lot of poverty and misery. This sight saddened the prince and being helpless, he would weep to see the plight of his people. Plight means to say that poor condition. He, you know, used to weep to see, to notice the poor condition of the people to notice how poor those people were, how miserable life those people were leading and how helpless he was that he couldn't help them. And, you know, he also came to know that the life full of pleasure, with pleasure which he led was actually very sad life because he was unable to help the ones in need. I'm moving further. One day, a swallow bird was flying through. One day, there was a swallow bird which was flying through the city and it was on its way to Egypt to meet its friends. On the way, it took shelter for the night at the feet of the statue of the happy prince. The bird realized that the statue was weeping and upon inquiry realized the plight of the prince. Now we see that how Swallow comes to, comes to know the Happy Prince. Swallow was actually going to Egypt to, to meet its friends wherein they have gone to, you know, to be there to have some warmth from the cold which is prevalent in that particular city. So that is why they went to Egypt. So while going over there, this bird spent one night at the, at the you know, uh, at the feet, feet of the statue of the Happy Prince. This bird realized that the statue was weeping and upon inquiry realized 
the poor condition of the prince what problem this poor uh, this prince was facing now this helpless prince requested the bird to help it by becoming its messenger now this happy prince he convinced this bird to become his messenger and help the people in need after initial refusal first of all this this bird refuses it directly the bird later on agreed and took the ruby stone out of the sword hilt and delivered it to the poor seamstress you can see over here this is the lady who is very poverty stricken and she is you know embroidering one of the gowns of uh, the queen's uh, maids and it is her son who is sick aged and you know who is demanding orange oranges but this woman couldn't afford to get an orange for her sick son because she is too poverty stricken so the happy prince was quite sad to notice her misery and suffering so that is why it asked the uh, you, you can say that this was a swallow to go and help this lady in need and how uh, how did he help her he sent his ruby stone which was fitted in the sword hilt and delivered it to the poor seamstress and it helped this lady <laughs> then this the next morning as he went to bid goodbye this bird went to bid goodbye to the statue but the statue convinced him <clears throat> to stay back for one more day for one more day this uh, you know bird this bird stayed with this statue that day the bird was asked to remove the sapphire stone from one of the statue's eyes and deliver it to the young playwright we already know that the young playwright was unable to afford even warm clothes which could you know give him some warmth during that winter season also on the third day this bird was held back and this bird what he did was the second sapphire stone for the poor match girl for the poor match girl the second sapphire stone was sent by this happy prince so now we know that happy prince was quite helpful and he was trying to level best to help the people in need he sent the ruby which was fitted in the hilt of the sword to ward that seamstress and the uh, the sapphire one of the sapphires to the playwright and other to the other to the match girl who lost all the you know match boxes and uh, she was scared of the repercussions because she she would be beaten by her father now by this time the weather had become cold and the bird had developed an attachment with the statue the bird did not want to leave the statue which had now become blind now the bird was full of compassion earlier the boy bird you know wanted to wanted to go wanted to lead a happy life wanted to join his friends who went to uh, egypt to a warmer place he wanted to go over there now that the prince was blind he couldn't see because you know uh, sapphires in the uh, fitted in the eyes were lost were, were given to the ones in need so now the bird did not want to leave the statue which had now which had now become blind the happy prince asked the bird to go around the city and inform him the condition of the people living there the bird told him that the rich were making merry while the poor lived in misery as the happy prince did not have any more precious stones he ordered the bird to remove the gold foils from his body and distribute among the living who needed money for their survival now you see how full of humanity this prince is and this bird is but the people who are living there the rich people who are living over there they lack this humanity they lack these morals that you know which should guide them to help the ones in need but this bird and happy prince they are they are doing to to the best of their levels so you know for the sake of the country for the sake of the poverty stricken people they and this is how the happy prince distributed each and everything he had amongst the poverty stricken people then we see that gradually gradually the statue of the prince lost its covering of gold and became dull and gray on the other hand on the other hand the poor became joyous as they got bread to eat 
this swallow bird was now unable to withstand the cold weather and realized that death was approaching it informed the statue that it had to leave the statue it had to leave and the statue who loved the bird asked it to kiss him as the bird died and fell at the statue's feet a strange sound came out of the statue the sound of the breaking of its heart although the statue's heart was made of lead it broke as it was overwhelmed with the affection towards the bird and now we see that gradually this happy prince lost everything every gold foil every sapphire ruby whatever it was you know it it was having it was it had it was given out of mercy to assist the ones in need the poor people were joyous now because they got bread to eat this swallow bird couldn't and couldn't bear the cold couldn't tolerate the cold weather now and it realized that the death was approaching it informed the statue and statue in return asked him to kiss and later on a strange and this bird died and fell at the statue's feet a strange sound came out of the statue the sound of the breaking of its heart although the statue's heart was made of lead it broke as it was overwhelmed with affection towards the bird and we find out that even the leaden heart melted when this bird died and you know it's it's a kind of comparison between that how blind those people were those rich people were who could see the suffering of the poor but they did not lend a helping hand to them but this you know this happy prince this statue of the happy prince and this bird they they you know they reach the pinnacles of morality they reach the pinnacles of humanity by giving everything they had by sacrificing everything they had for the sake of those poor people and this is how they brought happiness in their lives and at the end we see that the leaden heart also melted and it and you know the statue was broken what happened next let's know that and then we see when the statue was melted in the furnace we, we already know that who asked to melt the statue this mayor when he came uh, on the on around and he found out that you know the statue has lost all the gold and you know whatever it was jaded with so it was ordered that the statue be melted in the furnace the heart did not melt but there was a match there was a you know your kind of miracle the heart did not melt and was thrown in the garbage this heart landed near the swallow's body near the body of that bird and god's angels took both the dead swallow and the broken heart to him as they were the most precious things on the land and now these this statue and this bird swallow they were they were accepted in the paradise open heartedly and they were given quite an elevated positions over there because they helped the people by sacrificing their own lives so this is how this story comes to an end it's a very beautiful story that teaches you so many morals that you know if this if this statue which is not alive if this bird which is not a human could feel the misery could feel the suffering and could feel you know how those people were suffering the, those needy people were suffering due to poverty and due to starvation if they could feel why not we humans we humans should help one another whenever we feel that they were uh, one is in need so this is the moral that the story teaches you the story teaches you that always you uphold your morals always you uphold humanity choose humanity above everything above all and be merciful be compassionate at heart that is what the story teaches you now let us discuss the character sketches of the story important character sketches i'm going to discuss now happy prince is a very important character in the story we already know now we know that happy prince was turned into gilded statue upon his death and placed upon a pedestal overlooking his town the prince is described as ex exceedingly beautiful with golden skin sapphires for eyes and a ruby on his sword hilt His true worth lies in his compassion for his town's people and his willingness to sacrifice for them. The happy prince suffers, however, due to his sympathy for all the all of the misery he can see from the high perch. 
the happiness of this name is thus ironic as the prince describes having only experienced a false happiness in the previous life of pleasure when he was ignorant of the true misery surrounding him so this is the brief character sketch of happy prince and you can you know draft a character sketch for your own too we come to know that happy prince tore this statue was gilded upon his death and it was placed upon a pedestal overlooking his town and we see that the happy prince statue was quite beautiful and the happy prince statue was not only really beautiful you know from the exterior it was beautiful from uh, beautiful from the interior too because though it it had a latin heart but it was full of compassion for the poor full of compassion for its town people towns people and happy prince we, we see that he sacrificed each and everything he had for the cause of society for the cause of those people who were suffering and happy prince also realized that during his life he was happy but it was not uh, right it was not it was a false happiness because he couldn't see he was ignorant of the facts that people were suffering due to so many issues so this is what the character sketch of the happy prince is now next is the character sketch of swallow it is the other protagonist of the story it is a bird which was on way to egypt for the winter his trip is initially delayed due to his temporary passion for a bird another bird reed foreshadowing to the thematic importance of love in the story although he wants to join his companions in the sunny land of egypt where it is warm however you know the place where this bird was staying at present uh, at that time was uh, full of cold he begins to love the happy prince and remains in the town to help him deliver jewels and gold to towns people in need although not as selfless as happy prince is he repeatedly emphasizes his desire to live and enjoy all the beautiful things abroad the swallow comes to love the prince and understand the value of doing good to others now you understanding earlier this bird was not uh, happy in helping others and all that he was kind of you know time and again pressing upon this thing that he wishes to join his friends who gone to egypt but later on we find, we find out that this he falls in love he comes to understand and falls in love with the prince and understands the value of doing good to others and the need of it also it is the relationship of a mentor and mentee as you are mentee and i am mentor over here the relationship is developed between you know happy prince and this uh, bird and due to this relationship you know the ones who were in need they were helped earlier you know this uh, this mentee this younger uh, mentee this bird fellow was to be put on the right track at start but later on we find out that it was quite elevated and it reaches the highest possible position of morality and this is how the story comes to and uh, this is this is what the character sketch of this bird is and here in i have also discussed that you know this swallow bird sacrifices its life for the cause of humanity for the cause of these uh, people prince goes blind and he did, did not this bird did not leave the prince at all he you know first because the prince has already sacrificed his fire eyes he couldn't see any more and swallow helped him see the miseries of the people surrounding him surrounding him this sacrifice ultimately lands him a place in paradise for eternity reinforcing the story's moral that anyone can change and choose to do good instead of acting selfish the selfish thing so this story teaches you that we shouldn't be selfish we should consider we should you know uh, the humanity should be considered above everything else and this happy prince teaches us that we happy prince and this bird swallow teaches us that we should be merciful and compassionate at heart that is what the story teaches you